Hello YouTube, hello everyone, hello the world. So, uh, I thought it would be interesting to uh, to do some kind of a basic <coughs> overview of Blender uh, to get people who have no idea about how to use Blender uh, an, introduc an introduction into uh, possibly how to get started with Blender, how to use it for Orchid for for architecturally related stuff so i thought it would do, uh, you know it'd be a good thing to do a basic uh overview of some of the things that are commonly that might be commonly used just so you have a feel of where things are uh but there's a lot of tutorials out there on how to learn how to use blender so i really recommend watching and trying a bunch of things and tricks from other tutorials that have nothing to do with architecture because that's when you're gonna really take advantage of the real strength and hidden capabilities of Blender that you're not aware of. So currently there's two versions of Blender. There's this, uh, <coughs> there's a 2.8 that's about to come out. Uh, and so this is it that I've downloaded here. It has this EV, a new layout, uh, but we're not gonna talk about this one. Um, it's you know it's everything has been refined and rethought of so there's a whole bunch of new things in there uh, I highly recommend you go and check it out and on the website uh, so here are the different renders you know that this is the new one because uh, everything is reorganized the, the, the one that we're gonna talk about is the is the current one that you can easily get and um, you know if you download blender right now this is what you'll get and so as you can see uh, this one has three renders uh, the blender render the game engine and the cycle render and here uh, you know you can change the view the view type from here so this is the one that I'm going to quickly go through because this is the one that I am much more familiar with at this point um, you know if you can tell one of the differences this is the layers uh, but here there's no layer down here. They've rearranged the layers um, So <clears throat> Okay, so when you open blender, this is what you get, you know, so you get the camera and you get the 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 Sun let me uh, put on the screencast Okay, and you get the Sun Okay, and you get some kind of default cube uh, that and here in the center you get this kind of um, origin point circle thing this is what allows you to drop objects into your scene um, so here you have file um, so you have the new open you can start a new file like this a reload one uh, and so it's start a new file um, you can open a new an, a project that you had open recent uh, recover from last session save and you know so all the familiar things link link a file or link or append a file that's when you want to bring a, a you know a blender project into another blender file <clears throat> and then all the import options the export options and uh so so this is things have to do with the rendering uh as well so here things have to do with the window uh duplicate windows and stuff like that save a screenshot make a screencast and of course here you have all kinds of things like the help you can sort of view what version you have here and here you have the default scene uh, I don't use this much uh, and but you know there I can think of many times that you might need to use that but uh, we're not there yet um, so you have the scene here you can create different kind of scenes where you have different layouts and, and stuff like that so <clears throat> Uh, when you look at Blender, you have these little things here on the side, on the corner of Windows, these things here. Uh, you know, if you see them, they're almost everywhere, the corner of everything. So you can just drag those things, click and hold down the mouse, and you can just drag and divide for as many things as you want, uh, to create as many windows as you want. So if I drag it, so if I select this and I drag down, I can create another window right so i can create as many windows as i want and this is flexibility this is very good good so equally to close that i or to reduce the amount of windows i can just drag on it and and, and drag it into the window that i want to close in this way in this window okay or i can drag this one and and, and bring it up uh i can drag i cannot drag up because you know it has to be something next to it like I have to do this okay and then do this 
and do this so you can always divide and get as many windows as you want and if you see this little plus button it's uh it's to pop out the the uh the property uh window so you can also do that by pressing n you get that by pressing n and here on the side you you get the the tools window that you can uh activate by pressing t you know if and if it's off you know there's this little plus button that if you click there you get it and you can also sh uh, shrink it like this you know by dragging it out <coughs> like that and like that okay okay like that so that's that so now here you have a bunch of tabs you have the tools you have the grease pencil you have uh, relations you have animations you have the physics you have the grease pencil and there's something else like the G's that I imported okay so the trans the, the in the tools you have the translate rotate scale and mirror so basically the translate all of these things have something to do with uh, let's see what are you these things here okay so let me if I click on translate while this thing is on the is on the uh, it's you know it's activated but by to activate you right click <clears throat> okay so the translate if I click on it uh, it's you know if I just hover over it it's gonna tell me the shortcut is G so let me press G G is to move okay so if I press G wherever my object is I'm gonna be able to move it um, so or if I press translate here I'm going to be able to move it like that or if I come here this is transformation manipulator so the translate so you see these arrows so if I click on that arrow I'm able to move it if I click on the red arrow I'm able to move it in the red direction and such so just like that so or if I just since the object is selected if I drag on it if I drag on it with the, the left click you know the left click that the right click that you, you you use to select it if I drag if I if I click on it and then drag without releasing the mouse I can still move it but you know so it's the same thing as the G so I press the G and I can move it so that's the same thing as this the rotate as well <coughs> as you can see is the same thing as this you know if I click here I have the rotate so I can rotate my object the way I want it and while I'm doing that, if you notice here, things, you know, uh, if you notice here, the rotation is also changing. So I can do these things manually as well, where I can enter specifically, specific uh, units. Okay, so these things are all related. So, or I can rotate by pressing G. So if you hover that, it's going to, by pressing R, the shortcut is R. So Blender is very shortcut in uh, intuitive. So you, you know if you get used to the shortcuts, it's gonna make your life so easy. So by pressing R, I can rotate that, or by coming here, I can rotate that in the direction that I want, like this. I'm just clicking here and dragging it around, or I can enter a value, 180, just like that. <coughs> and here you have the scale, the scale, which is the same thing as this scale so you can do this I can scale it like this okay so this is what allows this kind of modeling to be very intuitive is that I can I can simply move things around I can position them the way I want it I can preview it I can analyze it very fast and I can decide okay you know so here you now have the edit uh, the edit you can duplicate shift D to duplicate that's the shortcut so I can shift D like this if I duplicate that like that so when I'm pressing shift D I like this I can move it but to move it in a specific direction uh, I can hold down the middle mouse button like this and it's going to lock it in one of the axes if I click on the middle mouse button again, it releases it from the axis. If I click it, it puts it back in the axis. If I, if I, uh, <clears throat> you know, if I move it towards the red, for example, you see it's gonna lock it in the in the x axis. Okay. So this is how you can move things in a very controlled fashion. 
uh, you can do the same thing also by pressing G and then pressing Y you say I want to move it in that axis okay I press enter and I and then I can press R to rotate rotate so it's rotating according to the view so what I want to do is I want to tell it to rotate according to the to the Y axis which is the green line so I press Y and then I can rotate it according to the Y axis or I can rotate it according to the X axis like this by pressing X or I can rotate it according to the Z axis like this <coughs> so let's say I wanted to rotate that uh, you know if you look down here uh, if you look down here there are numbers that are going on so that's how you know what's going on so if I press R X so you see rotation I can see along the global Z axis so it's telling me rotate so I can press in uh, 30 okay and enter so that's how I have rotated this object by 30 um, so so here I can duplicate the linked so if I duplicate linked it tells me the shortcut for duplicate linked is alt D so if I say I want to duplicate this alt D this object is linked so linked means if I change the material of one of these object like this uh, hold on if this guy had is his own material like this and I want to change this material like that so it changes the material of the linked object right so if I were to change this again uh, like that or let's say I were to I were to scale this okay so let me scale that like this I guess the link material does not work for the scale um, so the link material retains some of the material properties as well um, so you have uh, the delete so if I click delete okay so I can delete that so I can press X to delete if I select that I press X to delete that's the same thing so now you have the join control join so these two objects are two separate objects so if I select that and select this one you see that I have the main object selected and the secondary object selected and I can hit join and both of them now become uh, the one object so you know they become one object so if I select that it selects this one so if I you know have to enter into its edit property to select this object right so um, so now you have a uh, so it it's taken the precedent of the 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 main selection to to add to to insert a new origin the origin is the point from where you can move this object as you see there's that little dot right there so um, and this thing moves according to this so pivot you know pivot center for rotating so let's say I wanted to rotate this R X so you see it's going to rotate according to the origin if I want to rotate it from the center of these two objects I have to change the origin of these two objects so I have to select both of them when I select both of them you see it puts the cursor there it puts the cursor there and so now I can uh, change the cursor I can say uh, I can say control s I can press control s and then cursor to select it okay like that so I put my cursor right there and then I tab out of that and I come here object and I say uh, transform and I say um, origin to 3d cursor or here set origin origin to 3d cursor like this shift control alt C like that so now the pivoting center of this object is here so now if I edit that or if I want to rotate that now you see that I can rotate that from the center from its center so now every time I'm going to move that it's always going to keep that center okay so uh, you know so history of course undo redo undo history repeat last 
repeat history um, so that's that for that I'm not going to go into this the other tabs for now but obviously what's important is that you, every time you create it you have a translated pr property like this the value here or uh, this is what allows you to modify the value so I know that I move that by a value of negative 4.2 it's negative because it's, it's going counter the x-axis so if I, I press one here or uh, you know I wanted to move in the y by 5 or in the z um, let's see so I have to do that so it's moving in the z so it moved in the z by 2 I wanted to move by 2 so this is how I can tell it to move a specific unit so I moved it by 3.5 unit but that's not specific I want to move it by 3.8 specifically 3.8 so if I went here and change this to metric you know that's 3.8 meters I wanted to move by negative 3.8 and there you go so I'm at negative 3.8 so that's how you move things here okay so here let's talk about what's going on here here of course you have things that relate to um, you know you have things that relate to uh, the object so you have the location this is what tells you where in the th 3d space your object is located from its point of origin this is a, a, the point of origin so it's located at uh, one and 1.3 wide zero so if I press zero here zero here zero here I've effectively centered this object this objects origin at the center here okay so and I can lock it you know this allows me to lock that so when I've locked it the arrow disappears telling me there's only one possible motion for this object which is that the, the the Z and I can lock this as well so basically this object is grounded if I press G I can't move it at all it won't move it's selected and it goes to white because it's a command but it cannot move to move it I have to unlock it so this is very handy if you don't want to uh, to move any object by mistake you have the same thing that applies for the rotation as well so I can rotate this along the X like or along the Z like this by sliding around or by entering a specific value like that or along the Y like this so this is interesting because that means you always have the ability to enter specific values when you work and of course you can always lock that rotation mode of course uh, I'll let you play with that. The scale is the same thing. I can enter specific values to scale that. So let's scale that in the let's see the the, the y axis. So let's go to 3.8. So let's go to let's say 5. Okay. So that's how it looks. Let's try one here. Okay. So this is one. So you see how I can scale it the way I want. Let's go to uh, let's go to da -da 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 -da. Let's go to one here as well. So very quickly and very easily, you can see I have effective control on how I want to scale this, and I can always use the tools themselves to scale it visually. And when I'm doing this, if I press Shift, you see that it does that slowly. So Shift is a, by pressing Shift, it's a way to slow down the the intensity and the amount. Okay. So I'm going to scale that, skip that up. And so now you have the dimensions. The dimensions give you the overall dimension of the object. So if I came here into this mode um, where I said um, here bounding box, I want to see the bounding box of this object. Um, so you would see that the dimension G is actually the dimension of the bounding box. So if I go to 20 and I go to 20 and I go to 20 okay so I go back to the object solid so it's gonna take the dimension of the bounding box you know that this is this is the dimension of the object okay this is a space that it, it uses 
and so you have the grease pencil we will talk about it another time uh, the view uh, we will talk about that another time well this okay well another time we will talk about that the clipping plane if your clipping plane is too small um, you know let me show you what this does let me bring this down a little bit okay so you see how when I zoom in I'm, I'm a I'm you know it's not showing me things beyond a certain level it's because my end clipping plane is too small I want to increase the clipping plane um, you know so let's go back to 1000 so that when I zoom in as much like this I can still see it but here at 1000 it disappears so let me increase that um, and this is for smaller units so if you're working with really really tiny objects and when you zoom in so close and you can't see it it's probably because of your clipping plane okay um, the render border we'll talk about that later the 3d cursor okay that's the other guy so the 3d cursor right now is here so this is the location uh, you see transform location here as well as this 3d cursor this is everything concerning the 3d cursor so location it tells you negative 3 da 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 so every time you want to bring it back to 0 to the center you just enter zero everywhere and you have the 3d cursor back there and this is how you can always if you move your 3d cursor you know you can always bring it back this way okay um so let me delete this so that means that since my 3d cursor is back into place what i can do is i if i press shift you know here you have a uh, add add shift a if i press shift a i can add objects so if i can add a plane like this i have a plane uh so that's 3d cursor item display um we'll talk about it another time shading uh, another time uh background images another time okay so that's that that's the basic for that so here is where you can see everything that's in your scene you know so this is the general area where you can see everything in your scene so in my scene I have the lamp right here it says lamp I have a camera so as you can see when I select something it appears here I have a plane so let's see if I duplicate this plane duplicate 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 and so on so now you see I have all this plane so I can also select objects from here if I know what they are um, you know I can if I right click I have options I can rename I can delete the object from here uh, I can uh, you know I can do all kinds of things I can hide it like this I can tell it that you know I want to be able to select it or not or I can tell it I don't want you to show when I'm rendering you so that's what that means i have my world i have my render layers if you see i have render layers i have all kinds of options for the render layers okay so and down here um you know i have what's this again the properties so every window has a big icon here to start the big icon is what allows you to select uh the mode that you want to display for example if i want to create a second um a second property window i can select this this window has a big icon so i i'm just going to come here and select property so i have the same thing here again like this so as you can see property window da, 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 all of these things the same thing here so from here what i can do is uh inside here i have the rendering button which gives me access to everything that concerns rendering. I have freestyle here. It's good when you're trying to do freestyle uh, 2D uh, stuff, dimensions of your rendering images, uh, and the amount of resolution, the quality, the aspect ratio. All of this, I'm going to show you how to use that uh, very quickly. RGBA, this is when you want to create transparency. PNG, of course, the format that you want to export it. If you're, if you're rendering an animation, uh, you can tell it to be a movie uh, so the different file formats um, so here you have the render button for pictures and you have the animation 
and I've not really used the audio before. Here uh, you have the layers. So as you can see here are my layers are turned on. Uh, this is what controls the layers. So you have the layers here, which is this, and you have the scene layers. So it's, you know, if you know what to do with these things, you can do interesting combinations of a lot of things, which when the time comes, uh, we will be using them interchangeably. Um, and here, of course, you have the scene set up. So in the scene, uh, you know, you have a lot of things concerning the the scene. Uh, but here, I'm mostly concerned with the units. So I like to come here and select the units. Um, let's say I want to work in Imperial, for example. Everything changed to Imperial. Degrees of Radiance, okay. Um, Okay, so all of these things will be for another time. And then here another important thing is uh, the world setting. In the world setting is where you control everything that concerns the world in any render mode that you are. So if I go to cycle, you see that the world setting changes. Uh, in Blender render, uh, these are the colors of the world setting. So let's say I had a paper, you know, I, I want a paper sky. So, uh, let me go to rendering here, uh, Blender, and then I'm going to say rendered. So as you can see, it has the color of whatever I'm doing here. Okay. Or blend sky, I can make, I can blend two colors together, you know, like this. Or I can create a real sky, which is composed of two colors. So I can see I want this to be actually blue like this and uh, probably this to be like that. Okay, so that's it. And of course environment lighting, you can play with that. All of this thing has interesting settings, but we're not going to play with that right now as of now. And of course, when you're in cycles, things are a bit different, right? So cycles, let's see, let me put a plane there. Okay. Bring the plane down a, a bit down like this. And so let's go to cycles again. So this was white and go to rendering. So in cycle, you can see uh, everything becomes white. I can change the color of the scene at any time. Just like that. Um, so if I use nodes, I have more options. I can change the strength or I can tell it to go to the sky texture where I have further manipulation that I can do to it. Um, so let's say the strength, I want the strength to be at zero. So when it goes at zero, you see everything is dark. And the only thing illuminating the scene right now is the lamp, right? So the lamp is the only thing illuminating the scene. Um, so that's, um, So let me increase the strength and intensity. So let's see, and let me go to one again. And you can see that if I click here, I can basically move uh, my sun for different times of the day, you know, to simulate, you know, getting dark. And so this is how you can, let's say, create an animation. So let's say, for example, um you know i wanted to show that the sun is starting from here i can press i here and then it's going to give me this yellow and then i'm going to move it to here like this and then move this here actually okay and then move this here and then press i and then move this thing here and then press i again and then Let's try that. So if I play that. Okay, so my rendering is not as fast as it needs to be to show you exactly how that works. So moving on. So here we have um, uh, the object type. So 
um, it gives you information general information about let's say the object so like if I select the camera so I, I knew that this is camera so I can here come here and rename that camera too um, but this is not the real name of the camera because this is the object type so this is how you 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 kind of uh, uh, organize your stuff because the camera itself if I want to have access to this camera itself I can come here and this is the real name of the camera so this is camera one okay so if I duplicate this shifty so this would be camera 001 so that's the real name of this camera and this camera has got another, another object named camera 2 so every other object as well is the same right so this is the name of this object um, and so you can see you have the the location again which is related to this location so the transform property I can transform it from here and so and so the rotation the scale and all of this so basically all of this is this the delta transform is almost the same thing the location locks is this thing right here okay um, relationship is the layers this thing so this thing is related to the layers and this allows you to control the display so if I wanted to show in wires uh, let's see wire or a solid or just the bounding box or textured you know those things I can control that from here here I can look at the frames the duplications the vertex the faces the groups but I'll show you how that works another time here's a cycle setup uh, do, do I want this to show in the render do I not want it to show do I want the glossiness the and all that kind of stuff this is where you control the motion blur and you know for the object so this is settings that concern one object at a time and so moving on you have these uh, constraints constraints are very interesting but we're not going to look at them right now this is for a future thing uh, and then you have modifiers modifiers we're gonna look at them right now because it's actually crucial to be able to know how to use modifiers so I'm gonna start a new file like this and so I'm gonna go directly to the modifiers okay so let me delete this again add a new plane and let me zoom in next to the plane so if I press N you see that the, the dimensions of my plane is 2 by 2 so let me add one of the modifiers that I use a lot is the array modifier so the array modifier allows you to do this you know so I have two objects here three object and at any time I can increase or reduce the amount of objects that I have okay so that's what you use the array for so if I move this it moves the base so if I change uh, if I change this object like this you see that everything changes in the array okay so this is what the array is for now you can always change and have specific units so let's go to uh, the units imperial like that so the relative offset is just a value the relative offset so this is just a value so you can turn it off and you can use a constant offset where you can actually enter a specific value I want you to offset by one foot like that
Okay, so uh, let's see uh, shading matcap on. Okay, whatever. So you can always, you know, change that like that. And so you can always view that real time in your rendering or you can divide your screen like this and one screen is for the rendering and one screen is for working where I can say okay I want you to be one again and I can copy this this uh, modifier I can I can copy this modifier copy okay just like that so now I have two of these modifiers so in this one I can say well I want you to move on the side by this amount okay so that's how you would use that modifier so the array modifier it's something that I use a lot so you'd use that for example to do a stair you know so uh, let's say I had a plane like this you know and the plane was let's say um, on the x-axis it's 11 11 inches uh, no that's the location uh, the dimension here on the on the X is 11 inches and I want it to be um, four feet wide on the on the four feet so that's one of my stairs four feet wide and I want uh, to give it an array so that um, it's gonna be up by 11 11 inches so you're going to do constant offset and you're gonna say uh, seven inches actually seven inches up and I'm going to move it along the X by by 11 inches like this so I'm gonna say um object apply scale okay so here you go so you have 11 inches so and then I'm gonna increase duplication like this so now which takes me to my next point so if I have a plane like this the other modifier that I use a lot let me turn this off The other modifier that I use a lot is the solidify modifier. So the solidify modifier allows you to give some thickness. to your face. So I can say I want this to be 12 inch thick. Object apply scale. Okay. 12 inch thick or I can select this object which already has the array and I can tell it to be to solidify by 2 inch so this is how I can create so the solidify is very useful for walls for example let's say that um, let's say let me add shift a add a, a cube a square and so let me scale that like this and like this okay so let me uh, let me add a few um, a few subdivisions like this and so let me uh, delete all of the faces here actually let me just select it this way
okay so all of the faces is selected so I press X faces so I have that now so I want to create just some opening like this And I delete those faces so I would have something like that and all I have to do is come and give it a solidify modifier so now if you come to the top view by pressing 5 uh, you can see that the edges is not straight here so what you do is you do even thickness and now everything is straight and you do high quality normals as well so this is how I'm going to give it a thickness of 4 inch like this. Okay. So this is the thickness of 4 inch. So now you can see I have a wall um, that I can always control. So let's say I wanted to bring this up like this. So I have the, the ability to always control my wall. So this is what the solidify will do. So another thing I use a lot would be um, the boolean, but I'll show you that later. And I use the wireframe a lot. Um, I use this a little bit not all the time and I use a few more options here but let me show you the wireframe so this is what the wireframe does the wireframe will convert everything into wireframe and you can always change the thickness it's not a perfect tool but it gives you an idea of what you can do and also I use uh, another modifier I forgot is the subdivision surface so look at that so if I increase the amount of subdivision you can see what it does so this is how you create those curve features so if I move this up see what I have and then if I move this up again and then I move this up <laughs> not a good idea okay and down again so this is how you can do a lot of crazy stuff so those are the three main modifiers that I tend to use all the time so let me turn this off so I can press smooth here and everything looks smooth and then I can ch check out what it looks like in the rendering uh, go to the world setting bring some light out add a plane like this my plane doesn't seem to be down at zero maybe it is okay this is what is not at zero and I can just give this a material so which is the next thing we're not going to talk about uh, what do you call this again the data we're just going to jump directly here into the material so anytime you want something you you come here that you select your object and you come to the material and you say add new material if you click here you're going to have some of the materials that you've already created so but I want to give it a new material and then I can rename the material here um, you know stuff for example and here I have uh, the, the different types of of, of uh, objects so here you have emission for example let's say I wanted to make some stairs that are glowing uh, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna say glowing stairs and come here and then uh, give it a, an emission 
okay so if I come here in in this mode you can't see because this uh, this color has it's purple because the matte cap is on so if I select that like that and I change the material to green and the viewport color so this is how you change the viewport color and I say rendered so you see that my emission is working but let me turn off some of the world setting uh, my son let me darken this and also turn off my sun lamp so you can see that the stair is the only thing emitting right now and if I bring this box let's pretend that this was my house which I can scale like this Okay. So, as you can see, I can create a bunch of uh, emissive material just like that. I can also change the color of this one, duplicate that, and now I want you to be red. So now I brought my son back out, which is providing me some shadow. I can also increase the strength of the sh of the sun. And let me go to the world setting and bring back some light. But this is not very realistic, so I create I click on that and go to color where I select the sky texture as an example. So this is the general way that uh, you would move around FreeCAD, uh, Blender, sorry. Um, and uh, you know, this was just basically a way to show you how to move around. So you have the layers, for example. Uh, the layers allow you to uh, move this here like this. I can move that, so here I have that object still selected, so it's in this layer. So I can bring back, by pressing Shift, I can bring back both layers together like that so um, this is how you get into the edit mode of the object like this and then you know the sculpting mode where you can have access to a bunch of sculpting options uh, let's see you know you can Can do some some sculpting so if you like to play with clay and uh, understand the behavior of clay so as you can see this is how you're gonna be sculpting you have all kinds of sculpting tools here um, vertex painting for painting wet painting I mean you can do a lot of things with these things texture painting as well 
but here we're gonna stay here uh, for now so I think that I'm gonna do another tutorial this time around into a general way of modeling so I just wanted to give a preview of the whole interface and how things look like so um, I hope this was helpful and until then I guess I'll see you into the next tutorial